If you're in slow tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of drawing a blank. Oh <laughs> my god! Hi, if you're new here, I've talked about Dragon Prince multiple times in the past. You can go check out those videos here, but I'm here to talk about season three of Dragon Prince, so spoilers are coming in hot like a sunfire elf. If you don't want spoilers, then you should go watch the Dragon Prince for yourself and come on back later. All right, without further ado, I'm going to start talking about season three. First, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the season, then I want to talk a little bit about what I'm drawing, and finally, I want to talk about some theories I have for season four. So, season three, how did I like it? Well, some of you might be surprised to hear this, especially with how much I've loved seasons one and two, but I actually wasn't sure at first how I felt about this season. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed watching it and there was never really a moment that took me out of the show or any big problems that I had. It just all seemed to move so fast. And after my first viewing, I was kind of left wishing that they had taken more time to build up where the season left off. After all, a lot of story threads end up being resolved at the end of the season, enough so that they can kind of fake you out with a pseudo series finale. Now, I've seen enough info from the cast and crew to know that the Dragon Prince is still planning on doing a total of seven seasons, and season three marks what the creators called the end of arc one. Hmm, put a pin in that. We'll be coming back to that later. But I knew that the series wasn't over. And there were still plenty of other plot threads that I knew needed to be resolved. So I wasn't one of those people who was faked out into thinking that this was the end of the show. Anyway though, I felt like it was moving so fast. But after I had time to think about it, and even decided to take time to rewatch the second half of season two again, and all of season three, I've mostly changed my mind about the pace. It certainly does wrap up a lot of plot threads, but there's still so many questions and directions that this series could go that I'm super excited to see where they go from here. I thought it would take a lot longer to get to this point. So overall, loved it. Needed to watch it a second time to really appreciate how tightly the script and the character arcs were written to get our cast to where they are now. Even if I wish there was just a little bit more breathing room. Let's get into some of that now, starting with what I felt was the weakest plot lines, and then working our way up to some of my favorite stuff from this season. Let's start with Ezrin's plot, because I think this was easily the part of the story that I felt went way too fast. I was so proud of Ez last season, choosing to go home and face his responsibilities as king. I thought that that was not only a really mature choice for the character, but an interesting narrative choice as well. It would have been so easy to have just let Ezrin continue traveling with Calum, Rayla, and Zim, and justify it with, well, this is more important, we're serving the greater good, and yada, yada, yada. I do really love Ezrin's childish naivete with ruling the nation, and his unwavering dedication to doing the right thing, despite adults trying to tell him he's just a child that doesn't know what he's talking about. Ezrin's an excellently written child character. I love him to pieces. Ophelia's scenes with Ez were also the first time I've really rooted for her as a character too, because up to this point she's just sort of been yelling at Varen, which, you know, <laughs> fair, uh, but it was nice to see another side of her character. I'm also glad to see Corvus continue just being a cool guy, and I love that Corvus and Ophelia were looking out for Ezrin. Also, the Crow Master came back. Good 10 out of 10 lad. Anyway, unfortunately, we don't get a whole lot of time with King Ezrin before he steps down and goes back to Calum and Rayla. And I get that's where we needed Ezrin to be for the final battle and all that, but I just wish that there had been a bit more time spent on this plot point before Viren takes over. As is, it feels a little like the story is rushing through the beats it needs to tell before Ezrin can be whisked back to Calum and Rayla. Next, we have General Amaya's plot, and, uh, yeah. My only complaint is that there wasn't more of it. I love Amaya. I love that she gets to reunite with Gren not once, but twice. And I love Janai. Just, oh, hell yeah. Y'all, there is so much gay this season. 
it's the season for that gay shit. Inject it straight into my veins. Merry Christmas and good night. That is some good shit. But seriously, ugh, I just love Amaya. I love the way her relationship with Janai forms over the season. It was wonderful. You can tell how much respect they have for each other, for their warrior spirits and honor. And even though Amaya spends a good chunk of the season being a prisoner to the Sunfire Elves, the show was careful with how it framed their relationship as one of respect, and then friendship, and then falling for each other after they're on equal ground. I also really appreciated how they brought back the conflict between Amaya and Rayla from season one and had Callum clear that up. Nice bit of follow through. Speaking of which, Callum and Rayla. These two, man, okay, <laughs> they took me for a loop. I was not expecting things to go this way at all. All right, so first off, I feel like I've got to preface this part with where I thought this season would go. Of course, we knew that they had to get Zim home and that these two would be traveling through Zadia alone together, which was sure to lead to developing more of their budding feelings for each other. But I honestly never expected them to get all the way to the Dragon Queen in one season. And to be frank, I'm so used to shows dragging out romance plots that I didn't even really allow myself to get invested with their relationship. So I was honestly expecting them to get to Zadia and have something hold them up from reaching the Dragon Queen, like being held up by one of the groups of elves who didn't like it that Rayla allowed Calum to cross into Zadia or something. And then the two would end up kind of separated due to that for a good portion of the season. In general, I was pretty surprised by how unbothered the elves were with Calum. I feel like maybe the writers are saving this for a future season, in which case, cool, cause it did feel a little strange. I also thought for sure that Callum was going to be trying to connect with another Arcanum. Again, pretty sure that'll be tackled in another season. But on the other hand, I did really love where they ended up going with these two. Rayla was more so the spotlight character here and we got to see her deal with being rejected by her people and finding out that her parents had fought instead of running away. And I do really, really, really freaking love and appreciate how Rayla's turmoil over these issues was handled. As someone who also has a hard time being vulnerable around others, her reaction to all these heavy feelings were pretty relatable. And Calum trying to let Rayla know that it's okay to open up and be upset and cry was super sweet. I was pretty neutral about Rayla as a ship before this season, but it's definitely got me coming around now. These two are sweet and thank the stars above they didn't drag this out because Lord knows I've seen so many shows where they just drag out the will they won't they romance beyond reasonable points and it's the worst. Rayla and Callum being a couple automatically makes them much more interesting than when they weren't a couple and I'm hopeful that we'll get to see how they work through things as a pair now. A quick aside here, I love the details we get for the Sky Elves how only a rare few are born with wings, and how wings attach to their center of gravity. Also, yes, the boomerang references were A++, you guys. You didn't need to go that hard, but you did, and I appreciate it. And also, also, the animation on the dragon's lip sync is amazing. Dragons are tricky creatures to bring to life, but wow, the lip sync was top notch and some of the best I've ever seen. Just mwah. Okay, so. That was all the good stuff. Let's get to the juicy stuff. Y'all, I just, mm, The writers are targeting me specifically with the Viren, Erevos, Claudia, and Soren plot lines, and I've never felt so blessed. Ugh. My heart hurts in the best of ways, and it's only going to hurt more as the show continues, but I am so ready. Okay. I've mentioned before that I love Soren and Claudia. They've been my faves since season one and that hasn't changed. I just wanna give both of these kids a big old hug and tell them to stop listening to their garbage father. I know there's a good chunk of the fandom that hates Viren and I get that, especially with how he straight up gaslights Soren and turns Claudia against him. Ooh, wow, what a jerk. But that's why I like having Viren around. I love that Viren fools himself into thinking he's doing a bad thing for a good reason. And I hope at some point one of his kids gets the chance to really tell him off. I talked about this with my patrons at one point, but Viren's the kind of guy I don't think could handle being told he was wrong or evil. 
he's fooled himself into thinking his bad actions have good moral reasons, and it's so fun watching him do mental gymnastics to excuse his actions. I'm so proud of my boy Soren for ditching his dad and helping out Ezrin and the elves, though. Woo! I knew one of these siblings was gonna turn good, and I really didn't know which one it was gonna be until this season. This knucklehead needs some bonding time with the main cast, so I hope we get to see that going forward. But as much as I am thrilled about Soren, I am just absolutely heartbroken for our girl Claudia. Her lines of, don't make me choose again, Soren, and then, it's okay, you're better now, had me <laughs> reeling. Ugh! Claude's is going down a really dark path, and it's so good, and it hurts so much. <sighs> the way she's desensitized to her own dark magic has really made it harder for her to see what her dad is, and, and she's just trying to keep what's left of her family together, no matter the price, and... Jesus, Claudia, who'd you kill to bring your dad back to life? Oh my god! But yes, that brings us back to Erevos. Bug pal, Mr. Can't Ride a Horse Properly to Save His Life. Where do I even begin? Ah. I can't wait to see what mischief he creates, but also I'm dying to know his backstory. We got a little tease of his past grief with Thunder, but we still don't know exactly why Erevos was imprisoned in the first place. Since we've had plenty of flashback episodes so far, I hope we get some flashbacks explaining how Erevos came to be stuck in the mirror. I feel like it's definitely going to happen, but I'm just excited to see what all we'll learn. Erevos' current motive seems to be conquering Zadia. He said that much. At least, he wants Viren's motive to be conquering Zadia? We just don't know why, though, and I'm not wanting to make any assumptions about this guy. Who knows what we'll find out as the show goes on. So, yes, excellent season all around. Now we get into my piece for this week. Shock and surprise, I chose to draw Erevos, Viren, and Claudia. Love me that dark drama. The idea behind this one is the hold dark magic has on these characters and the way it's created a direct link between them. In this case, the hold aspect is quite literal and puts Erevos at the top in control over Viren's thirst for more power and Claudia below him held to her family. Drawing Dragon Prince characters is a lot of fun. I used to do a lot of Avatar The Last Airbender art back in the day, and it really influenced my art style, so I feel right at home drawing these character designs. They are, of course, a bit more complicated thanks to them being 3D models, so the clothes can be a bit tricky to get right with all the patterns and trim, but I really appreciate how much these designs say about these characters. And I super duper appreciate the turnarounds the crew has made public, so it's easier to draw fan art and create cosplays. That's so helpful. Back in the Avatar days, I used to print out a folder full of screen caps from the show to use as references, and having a resource like this given from the creators to fans is super thoughtful and encouraging. This is also my first time drawing Viren, and wow, I thought he was going to be kind of tricky to draw, but that turned out not to be the case. I've not really drawn many characters like Varen before, so I thought that the design would give me some troubles in that regard, but I just gotta say that he's a super well-designed character and drawing him really made me appreciate that. Everything about his design feels fine-tuned to tell you everything you need to know about him and even give you some cues to some subtle things to pick up about him too. His dadness is so undeniable. He has a dad bod. The face, the beard, the way his hair swoops to the side. But he also isn't a looming or super intimidating figure, though his posture tries so hard to make him that way. And his clothes, oh man. His clothes scream self-importance and a taste for nice things. It's all there. And it's all things I've been aware of since I first watched the show, but drawing it really made me sit up and take notice. In general, Dragon Prince character designs are great, and Viren's is just another good example of that. And this was a complete accident, but it was too good not to mention. The whole composition kind of resembles the dark magic symbol, which, like I said, I did that completely by accident, but it's still pretty heckin' awesome, so I thought I'd show that off. 
I thought about trying to put the dark magic symbol in the background for a bit, but it just really didn't work since they're already shaped like that so well. So I went for more dramatic mood lighting instead. And I know I said I wanted to talk about some theories, but I think that's going to have to wait for another video. This one is getting quite lengthy. Plus it gives me an excuse to draw more Dragon Prince content, so win-win for me. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed my ramblings and my artwork. Thank you to everyone who's drawn fan art. Angelina G.O. did a bunch of Starkling Battles inspired drawings. These are precious, thank you. I love this little peach paw so much. And Virtues ah, created this heartbreaking mini comic with wild fur and spotted shadow. Oh, how dare you, this is so good and I just wanna hug my children. Please go read this, it's so good. Tosofsky did these amazing Star Clan Battles characters' expressions. I love these so much. They fit the characters perfectly. Legendary. Mwah. Thank you. And we have even more Star Clan Battles character expressions from Chris. I love it. Keep up the great work, everyone. Have a very merry holiday season, and please stay inspired. <laughs>